According to LinkedIn, these are the fastest growing jobs in the US this year. So if you're thinking about doing a career switch, these are definitely some jobs that you should consider and take a look at because you're gonna have huge growth potential for promotions. And it also means that there's gonna be a lot of these job opportunities opening up. Now, my channel only focuses on corporate jobs. So as we go through the list of the fastest growing jobs, I'm only gonna be stopping and talking and highlighting the corporate jobs and how you can make career switches into those. So if you're looking at healthcare or government jobs, I'm probably gonna skip over them, but they're still in this list. So you can read through how LinkedIn arrived at the data and the conclusions here at the top in terms of how they came to all these numbers. But the very first job that they're highlighting that they believe to be the fastest growing area is the chief growth officer. Now, this actually is a spinoff and an extension of a sales or business development type of position. And the typical industries that are gonna have chief growth officer or anything that related to growth in their job titles is mostly gonna be in tech. Now, the great thing about this LinkedIn article is they actually tell you what the most common skills are that you're gonna need on your resume or to build up if you wanna get this type of role. And they also looked at the LinkedIn data to see what previous job titles people had before they switched in to a new job like this one, chief growth officer. And as you can see here, a lot of it is sales and business development. Development. And for those of you who are in sales or customer facing roles right now and you feel like you don't really enjoy your job but not sure where to go, this is actually a great career to switch into because sales in general has a lower barrier to entry. You can get a BDR role or an SDR role as long as you have some form of sales or customer experience and then you can work your way up from SDR to AE into a growth position. Now the second job that I wanted to highlight if you're thinking about switching is government program analyst. Now at its core, this is actually a data analyst or a business analyst analyst role, as you can see here from some of the more common skills that they're looking for. Now, some of these roles do require you to have a public policy degree. And for those, you may not be able to switch into those right away. And you may actually have to go back to school. But I do believe that if you have a data analyst or business analyst background, you should be qualified for these roles. And of course, government positions typically have the best retention and lowest turnover and layoffs. The third job here is environmental health safety or EHS. Now, I do believe from my research, you actually do need to get a degree. There is an environmental health safety or environmental studies degree that you're gonna probably need to get in school in order to break into this type of role. So you may consider getting a master's position if this role does interest you. Next is a revenue operations role or RevOps, or actually some companies may even call this sales operations. And it doesn't have to be a director level role. So those of you again who are in sales positions and you're not really liking carrying a quota and the stress of it, you could transition into sales ops. And as you can see here, there's a lot of folks from marketing who may also take this position. Now you may take a slight pay cut here because you're moving into an operations role and you're no longer carrying a quota, but it may be less stressful and could be the job that brings you happiness. Now the next job I wanna talk about is anything in DEI or diversity, equity, and inclusion. And to be honest, these jobs are pretty new. A lot of these companies and jobs were created after all of the unfortunate incidents with George Floyd. And now there are some master's degrees and certifications you can get related specifically to DEI and DEI training, but a lot of the folks that I know who have DEI roles, diversity business partner roles, v vice president of diversity roles, a lot of them were either in HR or recruiting. So honestly, as long as you already work in HR in some department, you can probably make this career switch without even having to go back to school. And of course, it won't be 2024 if there isn't something about AI. Now, keep in mind for any of these technical positions that are on this list, any of these engineering roles or AI roles, anything that's super technical will require you to get a technical degree. Generally, certifications are not enough to get you hired in the door when you are doing this big of a career switch. And all of the talk man and FANG companies are not gonna hire people who only have certifications. They're gonna want people who have degrees. So make sure you do your homework before you go ahead and choose that you wanna do this job. I know it seems great right now, the pay is absolutely astronomical for these roles, but make sure this is something you're gonna actually enjoy doing because you are gonna to have to go back to school, you're gonna to have to go take on some student loans, and then you're gonna to have to take this role. Now, I was actually really excited to see this on the list because this is my job as a recruiter here, and I became a recruiter with no recruiting experience before. And so I am a living example that you can make this career switch without any prior experience. You do not have to work in HR. It does help to have sales or customer service experience, and that will help you break into the recruiting field. And I've even created a workshop where I've helped people break into recruiting with no experience, and it definitely can be done. I really like this job, but and you don't have to be an extrovert in order to be a good recruiter. In fact, a lot of the recruiters I work with at my job are naturally introverted. 
In my own experience, I've seen people become recruiters from executive admin roles, from sales positions, from teaching positions, and from recruiting coordinator positions. But I will warn you, right now, the current economy in 2024 is not looking so good, and a lot of companies are laying off their recruiting organizations because they aren't doing a lot of hiring. So recruiting positions, in my opinion, are really fun and rewarding, and I think they do pay well, but they are cyclical, and they are tied to the success of the job market. And right now, I would say, honestly, you probably shouldn't make this career switch just yet, just because there aren't a lot of jobs available, and there's a lot of recruiting who were laid off that are also looking for work. But when the economy turns around, this is definitely a career you should consider. And recruiting roles have a lot of work from home flexibility. And of course, there are more AI roles. Next, let's talk about getting a job in corporate communications or PR. And no, you do not need to get a communications degree in order to get this position, which is what makes it so great. Even if you work in marketing, you can switch into a PR or corporate comms role because you can see a lot of people have already done it on their LinkedIn profiles. And this job is great because you can actually build up your experience and build up a portfolio without actually having this job. And so you can do side projects in order to build up your portfolio and use that to apply. And if you are thinking about a job specifically in corporate communications, I did some research and I wanted to give you more resources. So LinkedIn actually has a whole breakdown here of how you can switch into corporate comms if that's the job that you want. And I have an example of someone here who currently works as a director in corporate responsibility and communications, but you can see here that she started in marketing. And so you don't need to have a comms degree if you want this job. And I'm gonna have a link to this resource in the description of my video. Security roles are definitely becoming really popular these days as well. Program grant managers, more engineering. Ah, influencer marketing manager. So if you wanted to break into this role, you could start in a traditional marketing position as you can see here from some of the jobs that have transitioned into it. Or you can actually just do this on your own by becoming an influencer. I'm pretty sure that if you got really famous on YouTube or on TikTok or OnlyFans or something and you were actually able to build a successful marketing business and marketing model around your content, you could actually get a job as an influence marketing manager. And you could even work at an influencer agency. Now, a workforce development coordinator, but a lot of companies will actually call these learning and development roles or L&D. Now, I actually have a friend who got a master's degree specifically to make this career switch and work in learning and development, but you don't necessarily have to do that. You could start your career in HR because I've seen people work in HR and then move into corporate L&D. I've also seen people from corporate communications, from teaching, and from marketing. Now, the last one I want to talk about is this head of partnerships role or partnerships or business development. I mean, I'm pretty sure this could even be considered a growth position like in the first job we talked about because it all falls under the sales umbrella. And as you can see here, business development, partnership management, I'm sure even if you worked in marketing, you could work in this role too. So the key takeaway here is that if you don't like your job that you have right now, you have options. You don't have to sit there and go into work every single day hating your job. You should start with this list because these are gonna be opportunities and jobs that actually have growth potential for promotions. And there's also gonna mean that they're gonna have a lot of these job postings coming in the future because they're gonna have a lot of these positions. And when you are choosing to make a career switch and get a different type of job, it is important to factor in how many job opportunities they're gonna be in the near future because making a career switch can take one to two years. And you're going to need to be patient. You're going to need to build up new skills if there's a big skill gap between what you want to do and where you want to go. And some of you may even have to go back to school if you want a really technical job. Now, if you're watching this video or you read through this article and you're still not really sure what to do or how to build a career plan for yourself, why don't you get a free strategy session with me where I can help you talk through what potential job opportunities would be great and how you can actually get there. Thank you all for watching and don't be afraid to shake things up and share this with a friend who is looking to make a career switch.